Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I am going to explain enzyme immobilization. But before that, please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. So let's get started. Okay, so first let's start with the introduction. As enzymes, we all know our biological catalyst that increases the rate of reaction without getting consumed in the reaction. They may be used repeatedly for as long as they remain active. However, in most of the processes, enzymes are mixed in a solution with substrates and cannot be economically recovered after the reaction and are generally wasted. So there is an incentive to use enzymes in an immobilized or insolubilized form so that they may be retained in a biochemical reactor for further catalysis. Okay, so what is enzyme immobilization? It is a process of confining the enzyme molecules to a solid support over which a substrate is passed and converted to products. The process whereby the movement of enzymes, cells, organelles, etc. in space is completely or severely restricted, usually resulting in a, a water insoluble form of the enzyme. Okay, what is an immobilized enzyme? It is a enzyme is... Uh, it is an enzyme whose movement in space has been restricted either completely or to a small limited region. Why do we need immobilization? What is the basic need of it? So there are multiple reasons to it. First is to protect from degradation and deactivation, retention of enzyme or enzyme free products for recycling and repetitive use, cost efficient, enhanced stability, Use as controlled release agents, the ability to stop the reaction rapidly by removing the enzyme from the reaction solution or vice versa and allows development of multi-enzyme reaction system. Okay, so features. First of all, the enzyme phase in enzyme immobilization is called as carrier phase, which is water insoluble, which is water insoluble. But a hydrophilic porous polymeric matrix that is of agarose or cellulose is used. Enzyme phase may be in the form of fine particulate membranous or microcapsule. The enzyme in turn may be bound to another enzyme via cross-linking. A special module is produced employing immobilization techniques through which fluid can pass easily, transforming transforming substrate into product and at the same time facilitating the easy removal of catalyst from the the support or carrier utilized in immobilization technique is not stable at particular pH, ionic strength or solvent condition. Hence, it can be disrupted or uh, dissolved releasing the enzyme component after the reaction. What are the advantages of uh, enzyme immobilization? So, multiple or repetitive use of a single batch of enzyme. Immobilized enzyme are generally more stable. Ability to stop the reaction rapidly by removing the enzyme from the reaction solution. Product is not contaminated with the enzyme. Easily separation of the enzyme from the product. It allows development of a multi-enzyme reaction system. And it also reduces efferent disposal problems. So there are multiple advantages to it. Okay, so every coin has two sides so it has disadvantages as well first is it gives rise it gives rise to an additional bearing on cost affects the stability and activity of enzyme it, it may not prove to be of any advantage when one of the substrate is found to be insoluble and certain enzyme uh, and certain immobilization protocols offer serious problems with respect to the diffusion of the substrate Okay, so what are the methods of immobilization? First is carrier binding. In carrier binding, they are also categorized in physical adsorption, ionic, bond, ionic bonding, and covalent bonding. Second method is cross-linking. And third method is entrapment, which is also characterized in lattice type and microcapsule type. I'll explain each one of them one by one. First is carrier binding, which is also known as physical adsorption. This method is based on the physical adsorption of enzyme protein on the surface of water insoluble carriers. Like the carriers here are water insoluble. Example are ion exchange metric matrix, porous carbon, clay, hydrous metal oxides, glasses and polymeric aromatic resins. 
द बॉन्ड बिटवीन द एंजाइम एंड कैरियर मॉलिक्यूल मे बी आयोनिक कोवेलेंट हाइड्रो कॉर्डिनेटेड कोवेलेंट और इवन कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ एनी ऑफ दीज इमोबलाइजेशन कैन बी ब्रॉट अबाउट कपलिंग एन एंजाइम आइदर टू एक्सटर्नल और इंटरनल सर्फेस ऑफ द कैरियर लाइक वी लाइक वी कपल द एंजाइम टू द कैरियर सो सिंपल now the external surface binding method is advantageous why i will tell you because it does not involve conditions like pore diffusion disadvantages include exposure of enzymes to microbial attack physical abrasion of enzyme due to turbulence associated with the bulk solution and the major disadvantage is the pore diffusion of the internal immobilization i am saying Okay, so now we will talk about the particular methods used in physical adsorption. First is static process. So we can identify this by name that the enzyme is immobilized by allowing it to be in contact with the carrier without agitation. The agitation process is not involved here, as we can identify this by name that it is static process. and this is the most efficient technique but it requires time dynamic process the process typically involves the mixing of enzyme with the carrier under constant agitation using mechanical shaker then reactor loading in reactor loading we just load the uh, in reactor loading we just load the enzyme solution into the reactor and then agitation happens and that's how immobilization occurs in reactor loading electro deposition in this technique carrier is placed in the vicinity of one of the electrode in an enzyme bath and electric current is applied leading to migration of enzyme towards the carrier and that is how uh, immobilization occurs advantages of adsorption are that little or no conformation change simple and cheap no reagents are required wide applicability and disadvantages are uh, it is a slow method and desorption of the enzyme protein due to multiple changes okay, so now i am going to explain about covalent binding it is the most widely used method for immobilizing enzymes uh in this the covalent bond between enzyme and a support matrix forms a stable complex the functional group present on enzyme through which a covalent bond with support could be established should be non essential for enzymatic activity the most common technique is to activate a cellulose based support with cyanogen bromide which is then mixed with the enzyme like the matrix is uh, made from a cellulose based support with cyanogen bromide which is then mixed with the enzyme the protein functional group which could be utilized in covalent coupling include amino group carboxylic group phenol phenol ring and indole group okay so now methods of covalent binding it can be done by following methods first is diazoation in this bonding between the amino group of the support and tyrosyl or histidyl group of the enzyme is used second is formation of peptide bond in this bond formation between the amino or carboxyl group of the support and amino or carboxyl group of the enzyme takes place third is group activation use of cyanogen bromide to a support containing glycol group that is cellulose polyfunctional reagents in this we use a bifunctional or multifunctional reagent example glutaraldehyde advantages of covalent coupling the strength is very strong and this is a simple mild and often successful method disadvantages are enzymes are chemically modified so there are chances that the enzyme gets denatured and only small amount of enzymes may be immobilized okay so next is ionic bonding enzyme is made to bind to the support through ionic bonding in this uh for example deae cefadex deae cellulose dolan 50 carboxymethyl cellulose and amberlite are the supports usually used in ionic binding so advantages of ionic bonding it is of low cost regeneration is possible preparation is easy and overall enzyme activity in this is very high disadvantages are it is it is unfit for industrial use as effectiveness gradually decreases in this method and ionic interaction between substrate and enzymes disturbs the enzyme activity 
Okay, so the next method is cross-linking. This method is basically based on the formation of covalent bond between the enzyme molecules by means of multifunctional reagent, which leads to 3D cross-link aggregate. It is used mostly as a means of stabilizing adsorbed enzymes and also for preventing leakage from polyacrylamide gels. Most common reagent uh, used for uh, cross-linking is glutaraldehyde. As you can see in the picture, like first there is a free enzyme and then amination occurs and then free aminated product plus precipitant PEG, polyethylene glycol, salts and solvents are added. After that, aminated protein aggregate forms and, and then we add glutaraldehyde and then after cross-linking occurs. So what are the methods of cross-linking? First, uh, the enzyme is cross-linked with glutaraldehyde to form an insoluble aggregate. After that, adsorption of enzyme is done, followed by cross-linking. And then impregnation of porous material with enzyme occurs. Advantages are very little desorption. That is, enzyme strongly bounded with metrics. And second is best used in conjunction with other methods. Disadvantages are cross-linking may cause significant changes in the active site of the enzyme. Next method is entrapment. In entrapment, in entrapment, the enzymes or cells are not directly attached to the support surface, but it is simply trapped inside the polymer matrix. Entrapment is carried out by mixing the biocatalyst into a monomer solution, followed by polymerization initiated by a change in temperature or by a chemical reaction. Polymers like polyacrylamide, collagen, cellulose acetate, calcium alginate or carrageenan are used as a matrices in entrapment. In first diagram, the enzyme is entrapped in a matrix and in second diagram, the enzyme, the enzyme is entrapped in droplets. Okay. So, entrapment in gel may cause matrix polymerization, precipitation and coagulation. Entrapment in calcium alginate. Alginate is most widely used entrapment for microbial, animals, plant enzymes or cells. For example, glucose ox oxidase plus polyacrylamide. This is an entrapment. Then types of entrapment. First is occlusion within a cross-linked gel. So what happens in this uh, is a highly cross-linked gel is formed as a result of the polymerization which is a fine wire mesh structure and it can hold more effectively uh, smaller enzymes. Amounts in excess of 1 gram of enzyme per gram of gel or fiber may be entrapped. Some synthetic polymers such as polyacrylamide, polyvinyl alcohol, etc. and natural polymers such as starch have been used to immobilize enzymes using this technique. And the second one is microencapsulation. It is a very widely used technique. This technique basically involves the formation of a spherical particle. As you can see in the picture, called as microcapsule, in which a liquid or suspension of biocatalyst is enclosed within a semi-permeable mem polymeric membrane. Advantages of entrapment, loss of enzyme activity can be minimized and disadvantages are the enzyme can leak into the surrounding medium. Another problem which we face uh, is the mass transfer resistance to substrates and products like substrates cannot diffuse deep into the gel matrix. Okay, so the last method is encapsulation. Encapsulation is a used method nowadays. It is basically the enclosing of a droplet of solution of enzyme in a semi-permeable membrane capsule. But the difference between uh, but the difference between entrapment and encapsulation is the capsule here is made up of cellulose nitrate and nylon. Advantages are it is cheap simple and effective disadvantages are only small substrate molecule is utilized within the intact membrane. what we do in this encapsulation technique is first we take solution of enzyme and we add stabilizer for to stabilize the enzyme and then we add organic solvent such as ether and then we stir it after that we add cellulose nitrate alcohol ether solvent and then we and then we again stir it and then we remove the supernatant from the solution. 
After that, we add butyl benzoates, pen 85, and again stir it. Then remove the organic solvent, and then we resuspend it. And then we resuspend again in aqueous twin 20 solution. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.